Morning. Welcome back to Morning Manna. We're so glad that you have joined us on this, the Lord's Day. We hope and pray that you were blessed on last week when we began uh, our lesson study on following Jesus for the wrong reasons. Our lesson came from John chapter 6. Uh, we began reading last week at verse uh, 22 and we read down to verse 26. We're going to pick up today at verse 26 and go into our lesson highlight points. But first, let us bow for prayer. God, we thank you again for this morning manna. We thank you again for the power of your word. Thank you, God, for giving us ears to hear that which you are saying to your church, even in such a time as this. Bless this study, we pray, and may we grow spiritually as we dive deep into your word. Bless our time together again, we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, let's go back to John's Gospel, chapter 6, and I'm going to begin reading at verse... Uh, let's look at verse number 26 today, and we're going to read down, and we're going to, we're trying to, we're going to try to end today at verse 40. Uh, but let's see what the Lord tells us. John 6, the New King James translation. And I began reading at verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for food, which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then, that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert, and it is, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I say to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. Following Jesus for the wrong reasons. In this text, we, we've discovered and we shared on last week how Jesus challenged the followers of him, those who he had fed previously in chapter 6 with the two fish and the five loaves, how they were seeking Jesus the next day only because they wanted something to eat. They wanted another lunch. They wanted another feast uh, from Jesus. And I asked the question several times on last week, why are you? following Jesus? What's your motive for following Jesus? What's your motivation for following Jesus? And, and if, your, if your motivation is not eternal life, then you are following Jesus for the wrong reason. So today we pick up in chapter 26 when the crowd asked Jesus, how did you get here? When did you cross over the sea of Galilee, how did you end up in Capernaum? Because we did not see you, 
get into a boat as your disciples did. Lord, we're here. And so Jesus responds to them by saying in verse 26, you're only here because of the fish and the loaves. You're only here for what you can get from me physically. So Jesus challenges the crowd who followed him to Capernaum. Listen, I have something far more better to give to you if you're willing to receive it. What I have to give to you is more than fish and loaves. It's more than a meal. It's more than something that will satisfy you temporarily. What Jesus desires for them to get is the very thing I will give you will last forever. And he says to them in verse 27, you don't labor for food which perishes. Don't, don't seek food which perishes. And so uh, I, I want to deal with three things today in this text. Number one, don't seek the physical. Don't seek the physical. Verse 26, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves. You're only here because you want to see whether or not I will bless you with some more food. Look at verse 27. Do not labor. Do not work for food which perishes. It's going to go away. It's not going to last. This physical food won't last. But seek labor for the food which endures to ever lasting life, which the Son of Man will give you. The only person that can give you and I what we need spiritually is Jesus, is the Son of Man, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Whatever you need, whatever it is that you need, you need to know this, that the Lord is able to give it to you but it's not physical. What God wants to give you is spiritual. What God wants to give you comes from the heavenly father in heaven through Jesus Christ. It is spiritual. It is everlasting bread. It is a bread. If you eat the bread that Jesus desires to give you, you have everlasting life. So number one, don't seek the physical. Number two, write this down. Don't seek the temporary. The temporary. Why would you settle for the temporary when the greater option is the eternal? Look at verses 28 down to 31. Let's read. Then they said, the crowd said to Jesus, what shall we do that we may work the works of God. Jesus answered verse 29 and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. You worried about doing some work and all you need to do is believe in Jesus. When, when you seek, when you don't seek the temporary, you will receive the permanent. What, what is he saying? Look, look at verse 30. Therefore, they said to Jesus, what sign will you perform? <laughs> what sign? We're looking for a sign, Jesus. Now, we, we believe you, but there has to be more to what you're trying to say. What is the sign that you would perform that we may see it and believe? Remember when Jesus had risen from the dead and the disciples were hiding in the upper room and they had the doors locked and Jesus walked in and he greeted them and they saw the Lord and Thomas was not there. And, and later Thomas shows back up and they told Thomas that Jesus had came by and Thomas said, unless I see the scars in his hand and thrust my hand in his side, then I believe. And all of a sudden Jesus appears and Jesus said, blessed are they who have not seen, but yet believe. We need to stop asking God for a sign and believe the word of God. 
that it is our job, just believe in Jesus. Just believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Quit looking for a sign. Quit looking for the sensational. Quit looking for God to manifest themselves any way we want them to. But God comes to us the way he chooses. All he says, Jesus says to them, believe in him whom God has sent. That's what you need to worry about. Let's go to verse number 30. Therefore, they said to him, what sign? We, we need to see the sign, Jesus, that we may see it and believe you. What work will you do? What are you going to do for us, Jesus? Now, we, you gave us fish and bread yesterday, but we need a new sign today. Our fathers, they're talking to Jesus. Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Look at, look at, they're, they're still looking for a sign. And, and we have to stop looking for what is temporary. Quit looking for God to give you a quick fix. Quit looking for God to move on your behalf because you are not happy with who God is, the way God moves. You're not happy unless you see something extraordinary. So number one, don't seek the physical. Number two, don't seek the temporary because it's going to perish. But number three, seek the eternal. Go to verse 32, John 6, verse 32. Let's read this because it's, it's powerful. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you bread from heaven. They thought that manna was it. That was the ultimate. But my father, God, Jesus says, my father gives you the true bread from heaven. That's the difference. Manna came from heaven. God fed them in the wilderness, Israel, in the wilderness miraculously. But God gives us today the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he. Listen, the bread of God is he. The bread of God is Jesus. Who comes from, who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. Then they said to Jesus, Lord, give us this bread always. If you're the true bread, Lord, we, we need this eternal bread. Give it to us always. Look at verse 35. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. Isn't that powerful? But I say to you, verse 36, but I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. How many times have we been in the presence of of the Lord. I'm talking about in the spiritual presence of the Lord, and we didn't recognize the presence was among us. The presence was with us, and yet God shows up. We call upon the Lord. He gives us what we need. We're never hunger. We're never thirst if we receive God's true bread, and yet when the Lord shows up, we don't even recognize him in our presence. How sad. What an indictment on the church. Wow. Seek the eternal bread. Seek the true bread. We look at verse 37. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. Verse 38. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Verse 39. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, verse 40, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Don't seek Jesus for the wrong reasons. Seek Jesus that you may receive 
eternal life. Don't seek the physical. Don't seek the temporary. Seek the eternal true bread of life. And that true bread of life is Jesus Christ. God bless you. I hope you've been blessed by this word. I know I have. I will see you next week for our morning manna.